Hey friends, my name is Sydney Pip, and I'm a pediatric radiographer. I've been working with children doing their x-rays for the past four years. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about pediatric chest x-rays today. So we do chest x-rays either standing up or laying down based on the age of the patient slash the maturity level and how sick they may be. I have some video footage of me pretending to take a chest x-ray on my son who is six years old at the time. I will keep this area open to try to fit that footage in while I'm speaking about it so that we can discuss side by side all of the steps that I'm taking to take a chest x-ray of a patient who is able to stand up at the upright bucky. Once we discuss patients who are able to stand for their chest x-rays, we will move on to patients who are unable to do so. So I'm talking about babies and kids under the age of three. I will also insert footage of a baby doll that I have. The steps that I will be going over are what I do personally, and they work really well for me. There are radiographers that I work with who choose to do things differently. And once you are working in the field, you will get a feel for what you like and what works well for you. So you do you. So let's dive in to standing x-rays. So right off the bat, you'll see that there's a difference between pediatrics and adults based on I'm doing an AP projection on this child rather than doing a PA projection. So essentially he's facing my camera. We do this because it's more comfortable for the patient. It decreases their anxiety because they can see what's going on around them. When you try to do a PA projection on a small child, as soon as you walk away from them, they want to turn their heads, which is going to rotate their body. And then it's not gonna be the best image that you could have. With my son's age here, he probably would have been fine with doing it PA, but I was just demonstrating how we can do an AP or a PA projection for pediatric chest x-rays. I always get an idea of where my light needs to be first, and then I move my bucky tray. That way there's less going back and forth between messing with the light and the bucky, light and bucky. Once I'm kind of set up to where I need to be, that is when I move my patient to the position that they need to be in because the less time that they need to be in that position, then the greater chance you have of them not moving. The lateral view is the most challenging in this scenario. So you want to make sure that their feet are spread apart enough to make a nice sturdy stance and have their arms go all the way up so that they're not going to interfere with their lung field. Now the parent can stand in front of the patient and hold their elbows up to their heads so that they don't twist. And I say for the parents to hold onto their elbows rather than their hands because holding their elbows next to their heads gives them less range of motion to be able to twist. Also, children like to stick out their stomachs on this side view. That's not the biggest deal, but depending on how cooperative they are, how sick they are, I like to have them standing up straight. So ultimately, there's not a whole lot of difference with pediatric chest x-rays that are able to stand. You're still doing them at 72 inches. You're still taking the exposure on inspiration. Um, nothing's too crazy. Now, for younger children under the age of three, typically, you'll be laying them down. Sometimes when I have a mature two-year-old or an older two-year-old, I like to try to stand them for their chest x-rays or their upright abdomens first because they fuss a lot less whenever they are standing up. As soon as you lay a two-year-old down, they're going to cry and fight and they are strong. So I try to stand them up if they're able to, but if they're gonna be too wiggly and it could cause a repeat exposure, then I will lay them down. When you lay a patient down, you need to think of who's going to be holding that patient. Now, you'll need at least one person to hold their arms and possibly a second person to hold their legs unless you have what's called a papoose board. The papoose board is a plexiglass board with some holes in it to hold on to some straps. And it's not really comfortable, but it's also not hurting them. If you have been to school through x-ray and you know about a pigastat, we don't use those in my hospital, probably because it looks 
like you're harming the child and parents don't enjoy seeing their child in that position. Once you lay the baby down, I like to put the straps of the blanket over one leg and then under the other, kind of swaddling the baby's legs in before you put the strap across their legs. Also, the strap will go right above the knees so that the baby isn't trying to kick out of it because they can and they will if you give them any opportunity. Once the baby's legs are secure, the person who will be holding the baby's arms will go over to the head of the table and they'll take their the baby's elbows and bring them all the way up to their ears to hold them tight. If the individual that is holding the baby's arms tries to hold their hands, the baby will use their strength in their arms to pull themselves up out of their leg restraints. So we don't want to do that. We want to hold by the elbows all the way up by the ears. There are two common ways to get a lateral image on an infant. The way that I use most often is to do a cross table lateral with a horizontal beam. So instead of moving the patient's position, I move the tube in the image receptor. Not only is that easier for the parent to hold the baby without having them rotated, but it's also more comfortable for the infant. The parent will be in the same position using their hands to hold on to the baby's elbows all the way up by their head. If the baby's small, it's common for the parents to have their fingers in the light field. So pay attention to where the holder's hands are so that they are not going to show up on your image in the baby's lung field. The other way to get a lateral image is by flipping the patient onto their left side. It was hard for me to capture a good image of what this looks like because I didn't have a tripod and I was only one person. So even just getting some footage of this method was challenging. You can only imagine a screaming child, a stressed out parent, and this position that's just more challenging than what it needs to be. So going from an AP position where one holder has the patient's arms all the way up by their ears, the other holder has the baby's legs, you'll roll them up onto their left side all at the same time. It's common for the baby in this position to throw their head back as they're crying. As far as positioning, make sure that their hips are stacked on top of each other, that their hips aren't rotated, and that will cause a rotation in the bases of the lungs. If you're quick and you don't mind a baby crying, or if you need to do an image portable, then this is a great option. For people who are starting out, or for people who don't mind taking a little extra time on their x-rays, then I definitely do the cross table, horizontal, lateral, as often as I can. A few extra things that I have to say about chest x-rays on pediatric patients are that Young kids aren't going to follow breathing instructions, so patients under the age of four, maybe a, an older three-year-old will be able to follow breathing instructions, but less than that, you will have to time their breathing. Going along with that, new parents or parents of infants, even if it's not their first one, they are often stressed out because their baby is sick and they would like answers on why that is or how to treat them. And hearing their baby cry makes them incredibly anxious. So before bringing them into my room where I know that I'm going to make them cry because they are going to be put in a position where they don't like it, I always warn the parent that it's okay when the baby cries that tells me when I can take my picture and it also ensures that their lungs are full of air so that we get a nice picture. We don't want to take a picture that is not going to be pretty. It's worth it to wait and to time it out properly. Don't just expose because the baby's crying and you want to get it over with. So I think that's all that I have for today. If you learned something, please like this video and I enjoy seeing my subscriber count grow and people who are interested in radiology. If you have any specific questions of things that you would like for me to go over, please leave them down below. Thank you guys for hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day and stay safe. Bye.